Hi, I'm Grace from Brianna ASEAN. And of course, you are with us. Uh, not in the Duran ASEAN office, but we are outdoor in Cyber Jaya at the Magic Academy. That's right, we are attending the MA2015, which is happening for the second time this year, where they are getting people from uh, all over the country, even from other ASEAN countries as well, and equipping them with the right set of skills yep. to venture out into the real world. Yep. And they will be speaking uh, with a few speakers uh, from different uh, areas of the business world today. So uh, check, the, uh, check us out and then see what we have to say. Actually, a friend sent me a link to a site in the States that was quite similar to right. TheLuxNomad.com and we initially launched it three years ago, uh, July 2012, as a flash sale site. So back then, you know, Groupon was happening, flash yeah. sales, etc. Yeah. But the longevity of that business model, um, it's not really there because I, could, I guess it's like walking into a department store. If it's on sale all the time, you kind of get immune to it, right? Yeah, so, so soon after, I'd say about six months or five months after, we were adding hotels that you could book at any time. So it's just not flash sales. And last year, we started adding villas, and we found villas worked really well for us. And I guess what we've also benefited from is, you know, the huge um, sort of success of Airbnb. Is that everyone's really keen on vacation rental. Yeah, and we are also expanding into villa management because we had some owners who were like, obviously they're quite well to do if they can build a home in Bali and get across millions of US dollars. So they're like, we don't have the time to handle these inquiries, we want someone to manage. So that we're expanding into that. So we'll have villas with staff wearing like Lux Nomad outfits. Nice. Haven't designed yet, by <laughs> So this is a mix, and um, 136 people have, have listened to this mix, mm -hmm. and it's from a DJ um, in London. Uh, because it's hard. That's why. Like because um, people say you can't do it, and because it's a bad investment. Just like all the reasons why not to do it. I think I always wanted to be like I think growing up I, I always needed to do like you know rather than getting an A on the question that I was asked in English I would get an A minus because I <laughs> answer a different question that I wanted to answer. You'd be a bad Asian student. <laughs> bad Asian <laughs> student, bad American student, bad Jewish student. <laughs> Um, it's, it's good to be challenged, it's good to work with a team of people who could be doing other things and, and, work in, and, and feeling like you have to, you have to contribute. So, um, so Magic, uh, a lot of people did, don't know this, but Magic technically has two units. One is the entrepreneurship development, the other one is the social entrepreneurship uh, unit. Social entrepreneurship is very new, hence there's a lot of confusion around, you know, what's a social enterprise, how is a social enterprise different to an NGO, what's a, how is a social enterprise different to a company practicing CSR, what's a social enterprise different to a typical enterprise. So when we talk about social enterprise, we're talking about uh, an entity, whether they're registered as a society or syndrome the heart, who actually exists to solve a social problem. Uh, so hence they have a social mission at the core of everything that they do. But they have a business model as well to uh, back it up or to, to deliver the social mission. 